What's up guys, we're here, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm bringing you a very, very, very fun build. And that is gonna be Arc Lash with the Pain Gorgers Gauntlets on the Sorceress in Diablo 4 Season 3. Now, we're gonna go over everything, skills, Paragon Board, gear, all the good stuff, and I'm gonna showcase a little bit of it in a T100 because I know that's what everybody needs to see to validate the build, which is just crazy. But ever since I saw the Pain Gorgeous Gloves, I wanted to, you know, as a Sork main, I immediately thought, I'm like, oh my God, Arc Lash. Arc Lash was already super good and it was super school or like school, super cool before, but now this should take it over the top. Now, I don't have a max roll here as far as the percentage, but we did get a max roll on the basic skill damage. So I'm pretty happy with that. So just like the Druid and probably like no other builds in the game, Arc Lash is a basic skill and we're just gonna be absolutely slapping. Okay, you can see we almost hit for a million. I've hit for 1.2 million before on Arc Lash and it's kind of crazy how fast we attack. And not only that, that is just the range on this build is act like actually really, really good. So let's go over everything quickly so we can get into the T100 to show you guys. So let's hit up the skills first because that's the most important. All right, so Arc Lash, we're taking Firebolt here. We're taking Firebolt because we are gonna be doing Firebolt in our enchantment slot because we wanna make everything burning. Super good here. What it does is it just opens up an array of not only damage dealing mods, but more like survivability mods as well. Then we max out Arc Lash and we're gonna be taking Glinting. Okay, is my thing still hitting them? Back up. Stupid little bot. Okay. Useless creature. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Arc Lash all the way into Glinting. Okay, Glinting is the most important one here. Hitting a stunned enemy reduces my cooldowns. Okay, this is very important because we're going to be rocking um, the big, huge, unstable currents, which we need to reset this as much as possible. Okay. Now, you could do this if you wanted to move a little bit faster for speed clearing content like 80s or below, which would be more than fine. So if you're doing speed clearing, switch to flickering. Otherwise, glinting is where you need to be. We're taking nothing in core skill. We're not taking devastation, elemental dominance, nothing because we're not doing anything with core skills or nothing like that. We're going to come down to defensive skills. We're taking flame shield with one point to gain a little bit more move speed although you don't necessarily need this to be required you could take this out this is a free point you could put it anywhere you want um more elemental attunement more dr um you could even put it in like uh you can max out unstable currents if you wanted to totally up to you i just wanted to be a little bit more faster in my clearing then of course teleport teleport is going to be huge and i'm going to show you guys why because it's absolutely insane with shimmering for just more dr we max out glass cannon as well as one point into elemental attunement for a chance to reset one of these two defensive skills then we're going to come down we're going to max out conjuration mastery because we got two different conjurations and they're going to be going on non-stop we got one point in alignment elements for dr max out mana shield for dr max out protection for a barrier very important we got ice blades ice blades into summon ice blades to help with cooldown not only on teleport but more importantly unstable conduit or currents excuse me then we got lightning spear into invoke lightning spear i feel like almost every build i'm making for the sork this season has lightning spear because not only the vulnerability but the stun it's just too op not to have it's insane okay then we're going to come down to our mastery skills we have one point icy veil just from our barrier again this is also a free point if you wanted to take the point out of here you could put it in here i should be able to put more barrier or take the point out of there and just kind of put on shimmering if you feel like you need more life um you don't need mana cost reduction because we're using the base but if you want to heal more life that could also be just fine you can just pop it in there like this super good we're taking inner flames as well as devouring blaze for more crit now <clears throat> We're taking this because we are going to be doing Esu's Ferocity, which I'll get into in just a minute. So we're going to be doing Permafrost for more damage against elites with Frost skills. Not important. We're doing this for Horror Frost for 9% increased damage to chilled enemies and 18% if they're frozen. This, with testing, big shout out to my community for helping me with this. We tested this and the extra 9% is huge. If we get a freeze, it's amazing. But if we don't, it's okay. And I'll talk about why Horror Frost is so good because in our pet here we're running frigid which is gonna apply chill okay we're not we're gonna very rarely freeze but we get the chill on a hundred percent of the time so horror frost is just always active okay 
Um, if there was a spot here for, like, Frost Nova, then we could put it in to get that damage, but it's not really not important. You're going to just melt everything anyway. Um, then, of course, we're doing Unstable Currents into Prime for the increased attack speed. Unstable Currents is just going to spawn a bunch of Lightning Spears, Chain Lightnings, Ball Lightning if we have it, but super good. Attack speed's insane. Then we're taking three in Coursing for not only increased crit strike chance, condor, uh, conduction, excuse me, for move speed, and then electrocution for even uh, less damage that we take. It's not necessarily DR, but we just take less damage. I guess it is DR. I don't know why I said it that way. Um, you could also put those two points into convulsions if you wanted to as well, guys, um, just to kind of make a better chance to stun them if you wanted to. You're going to be stunning like crazy anyway, so it's not really going to matter, but yeah. Now onto Esu's Ferocity. Again, this is applying to all skills. Okay, this includes our um, lightning skills, not just fire skills, also includes frost skills. <clears throat> However, even if Esu's Ferocity didn't give us increased crit and crit strike chance, if they did fix that, let's say, we would still take it over overflowing energy because of the increased... Um, because we get the crit strike chance, we would take that because of our offhand Ancient Flame, okay? Ancient Flame is gonna give us 47% increased attack speed when both bonuses of Esu's Ferocity Key Passive are active, all right? So, we burn them, right? We get the burn from the burning and then our Flame Shield, and then we're gonna get both bonuses from um, Esu. So, even if they fix it to where the damage doesn't work, we can still get both bonuses and get the increased attack speed. However, I have tested this with overflowing energy. I don't think it works that great because you're only making crackling energy from the um, unstable currents. It's just not enough to justify. The only other one that I would rock here would be Veers, which is solid. You get the increased damage of your shock skills. You take less damage and then Chris Strike increases these bonus. So I opted for more attack speed, but Veers works just fine, okay? If you're gonna rock Veers, mastery now we're going to get into the gear you would just swap this out um ancient uh, ancient flame you just swap this out for uh what is it um storm swell you just swap it out for storm swell and you're good to go right so into the gear we're doing disobedience now the reason that we're doing disobedience instead of juggernauts i love juggernauts this this season and probably every season going forward because juggernauts just makes capping your armor super easy uh, but it does slow us down on our evade and we need our evade because we have teleport enchantment which is going to be our second one teleport enchant is our second one because we are going to be absolutely flying in this build so we got disobedience here we got remnant for teleport we pull everything in and stun very important more damage then we got pain gorgers more basic attack skill damage now damaging enemies with non-basic skills marks them and then for three seconds <clears throat> excuse me marks them for three seconds when a basic skill first hits them, it hits all marked enemies, dealing 170% increased damage. This is great. Lightning Spear and burning damage from our Firebolt Enchantment is what's going to allow us to apply the mark. Okay, super good. All right. Uh, to Balt's Will, no brainer. We don't need the, the 50 resource, but 40% multiplicative damage is too hard to ignore. Then we got Flicker Steps, and this is where the build just really just becomes so smooth i really since the release of flicker steps haven't really enjoyed it because there hasn't been a build or a ultimate that i really cared about enough to try to get the uptime but unstable currents on this build is absolutely insane with this so as we evade we reduce our cooldown of our ultimate by four seconds now here's the trick okay here's the trick with and you'll see it when we go into the T100 with teleport being our being our enchantment slot. When we teleport and pull enemies in, that is still going to trigger and act as though we evaded through the enemies. So if we teleport in with our evade and pull five enemies in, it's going to reduce our cooldown by 20 seconds. Okay. It's still, or not 20, it'll reduce it by 10, but it still makes it seem as though we evaded through them when we pull them in with remnants. That's why this combo with remnants, flicker step and teleport in your enchantment slot is so nuts. 
We evade and teleport. We pull everybody in and we get the flicker step trigger. Hidden tech. Don't forget it. Next, we got conceded for more damage because we're always going to have a barrier. Then, of course, Ancient Flame for more attack speed because this is a basic skill build. We want to be able to attack as much as possible. Then we got Talrashas for more damage. Super easy. Then we got Rapid for more attack speed with our build. I need to get a max roll here but because 10% is a lot. And then the last one, which is new to this season, which is why I thought about this build, is Adaptability. This only can drop on a ring. Only can drop on a ring. So if you want to spend your ovals, do a ring. Or if you find it, it's only on a ring. So when cast below max 50% max resource, basic skills generate more. That's great. We don't care about that. We're never going to lose our resource because it's a basic skill. Next part is important. When cast at or above 50% max resource, basic skills deal up to 80%. We got a 60% roll. I'm still looking for that. But up to 80% multiplicative damage. It's insane. So I'm still looking for a max roll there. But yeah, that's the gear, guys. Insane. Now, over to our incentive shell, of course, Flash of Adrenaline um, for even more damage. Tactical, duration, safeguard, super easy. Then, of course, Tempest. We're arcing here with Frigid for cold and then breaking for vulnerability. All right. Next, let's go to the Paragon board. All this will be down in the description below under Mobilytics. Uh, so <clears throat> let's talk about our, our glyphs here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We are doing control easy everything's going to be stunned and we also going to slow or excuse me chill them so we get increased damage destruction for more crit elementalist for non-fizz but more damage there for dealing with fire lightning and cold then we got flame feeder for more damage against burning then we got reinforced for more damage reduction with a barrier we always have a barrier then we got territorial for more damage up close and dr and then we're doing enchanter for even more non-physical damage as well as resistance capping so that's going to be the build guys i'm going to go show you this in a t100 vault okay let's go do this this is a t100 vault and i'm just going to showcase how to play the build because it is it is extremely fun it's extremely fast and i was actually really quite surprised when i finally got everything put together how well this build runs now i do want to mention one thing the build does struggle against bosses okay now when we do bosses you're just going to swap in god slayer you drop disobedience you swap in god slayer for even more damage it can do all content the bosses are just going to take a little bit of a time because this is a basic attack build all right druid has a better basic attack build than sork but this one is still very good for doing everything in the game it's just dungeon bosses as well as like duriel or lilith are going to take a lot longer that's why i'm not showcasing them in this build because this is going to be just a super fun farming build for hell ties and dungeons so it's pretty simple we're just going to always pop our defenses and spears when they're up same thing here pop ice blades and then we just dash but keep an eye on unstable currents and then how much we can teleport it is a very good build so we just teleport in there we go right and all the damage we deal see how the the evade just triggers all of this right just teleport in and it triggers all of it and i already got my ultimate back right already got my ultimate back trigger in it's kind of nuts the range on it is nutty right and the more damage we deal, we reset our our um, evade, which is really nice. And again, we can just teleport so much. We just move super fast in this build. It's super good. Our evade is always up. We're always going to have our disobedience up. I mean, we just move incredibly fast, right? Unstable conduits. I would love it if I could have... Look at that. Unstable currents is already back. And we're just like moving, right? Just keep rolling. The range on it is actually surprisingly good. We can just go so fast. Right? Already. Look at that. Our unstable condo or currents is already packed again. It's a really, really satisfying build. Again, keep it keep an eye on that. Every single time I like dash or evade with my teleport, we just get all of that back. Suck them all in boom 
teleport through, we get all that credit. The build is very, very satisfying. Again, like I was saying, guys, I'm like very surprised that the build worked as well as it does. Like, it's just, it's so good. We just were just so fast all the time, right? Just dash in, dash out, dash again. You get all that credit, all that credit. Look at that. My currency is almost back again. It's back. Boom. It's just too easy, man. Stun everything. Our lightning spear and flame just doing damage. It just all gets reset. It may not be the fastest of the fastest, but the build is is very, very satisfying, guys. I really, really enjoy it a lot. Our cooldowns are insane. Oh, one thing I should mention on the bosses is that you will swap out. You will swap out teleport for um, uh, ice blades just for even more cooldown. You just swap those out. It's no problem, right? Oh, I actually died. I wasn't paying attention. This is good for the video. See, so like because we can't like super duper max out everything. I can't believe I got to go back there all the way and pick that up. This is the only struggle because like while I'm hitting with disobedience, like we can max our, our armor or at least the cap. I get to about almost 13,000. Um, but that's where I love Juggernaut instead because we're able to just, without having to deal damage, just be maxed no matter what. And disobedience, you're required to deal damage, which is like just annoying. But it allows us to keep our evade speed up. So as long as you're able to evade, you should be good to go, right? Because, like, the Juggernaut adds on the 100% uptime. So we just... I know that when we deal damage, we would we would be able to still do it. I just think we wouldn't be able to do it as much because of the seven seconds instead of, you know, three and a half. But, yeah. The only thing that I will say is that you can see that I do get stuck, too, sometimes. And that's because we want to try to combine our evade with flame shield so that way we can move freely between enemies because that's probably the one negative is that like if unless unless you have flame shield up you aren't like when you pull them all in with remnants you kind of get stuck in between all the enemies which is just it's just a little bit of annoying but the double deaths just got to go i don't know why all these double deaths are in here it's so dumb yep pull them all in it's really, really good for a basic attack build. Like, just really, really good for a basic attack build. Again, I'm super, super surprised in how fun this can be. And then, of course, like, you know, in a... All the overworld stuff, it's a no-brainer. It's super easy. It's no problem at all. I mean, I've already got all my stones maxed. Enchanter, we got to get this to 21. It's our last one to 21. But yeah, guys, that's the build. Arc Lash, super, super strong. Again, like the video, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think, all right? It's not the best, best build in the world, but it is super fun and super satisfying. So if you like basic attack builds and just trying something new, this is definitely for you. Like the video, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to subscribe, and as always, stay gaming, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.